Hello, and welcome to our podcast. For the last three years, Hope Church South Bedfordshire here in the UK has had people meeting on weekdays to discuss God's Word together. We've moved this discussion onto this podcast so others in our congregation, our area, and the wider world can enjoy God's Word along with us. In this episode, we're looking at the book of Mark in the New Testament, and we expect as we read, God will teach us and we will help each other learn more. As you listen to the prayer, the reading, the discussion, while you're listening, ask God to reveal things to your heart. The book of Mark was written so that you would come to know who Jesus is, and our desire is that we will all come to know him better as we look at this together. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our podcast this morning. Uh, we are looking at Mark 10, 46-52, and I've had a kind offer of Faith praying, and Helen's going to read for us. Over to you, Faith. Lord, we thank you for a new day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you that you want to speak to us and reveal more of you to us. And I pray that we would hear more of you, what you have to say. Thank you for this privilege. Amen. Amen. Mark 10, verse 46. Then they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Artemis, that is the son of Timus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he is calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, Helen. And um, this morning we're looking at a healing of a blind man. Uh, Bartimus or Bartimaeus, uh, depending where around the world you come from. And um, he crying out to Jesus and we find him um, crying out to him, calling out to him. And this is similar to maybe where people's hearts are. Is this where people are? You can either listen to the crowd or you can listen to Jesus. There's something being called out here alongside with it being a, a great story of healing and of Jesus moving very powerfully. At the same time, it might also help us think about where we are with Jesus and where our heart response is. And, or maybe it's about the disciples and maybe where their heart response is as well. So there's a lot going on with the story and I won't say too much. I'll just open it up and see where people would like to comment i think bartimaeus must have been desperate mustn't he you know he was um he's used to begging people for money but now he's really desperate to be able to see so that he can lead a normal life and you know he he didn't hold back did he, he really shouted out and um other people didn't like it really but he you know he was desperate he wanted to shout he shouted out to jesus and jesus responded and you know, when we shout out to Jesus, he responds to us, doesn't he? And, um, you know, sometimes we have to really, he knows our hearts. He knows if we really mean it or not. And he obviously really meant it. And, um, you know, other people wanted him to stop. But, um, you know, he shouted and called on him and Jesus answered him. And I think, you know, I think he got up on his feet. I was thinking he wouldn't be able to see and he got up and, 
he obviously went towards the vo- his voice, you know. And, um, you know, sometimes we have to make, we don't, I mean, we can do it in our hearts, but sometimes we have to actually do an action to go to Jesus and um, to show him <clears throat> we mean it, you know. And um, he threw everything aside. He threw his cloak away, you know, all the things that he held on to, to get to Jesus. And sometimes we have to do that. Some things hinder us. Um, that cloak would have hindered him getting there, and he threw it aside. And um and I think, you know, it's a lesson for us, isn't it? That, you know, sometimes things get in the way of, of, of Jesus, and we have to throw those aside to have into a deeper relationship with him. He had to go against the crowd, didn't he? The crowd were all um quite harsh, weren't they? This, this poor blind man who they probably knew, he was probably at his regular place begging. They probably got used to him being there. And... um uh, they were just very, very harsh and telling him to be quiet and not to uh, be a nuisance. But he persisted. And I think that's a real lesson, isn't it, to us, to persist, yeah. even though we're going against the flow of people around us um, who don't want anything to do with Jesus, who don't n- want to know Jesus. This blind Bartimaeus recognised who Jesus Jesus was, he called him son of David. Um, I don't think any of the previous people that Jesus encountered had had called him son of David, had recognised who he really was, apart, apart from the demons, wasn't it? The demons were the ones who, uh, who seemed to recognise Jesus, but the ordinary people didn't. But Bartimaeus had been, I think he must have been touched by God beforehand and uh, his spiritual eyes had been opened to some extent to realize who Jesus was. Yeah, I think it's in some ways the blindest guy there has the most spiritual insight. <laughs> He's calling him son of David. He recognizes him as a Messiah. That That's pretty deep. Um, mm. A very powerful statement to Helen. Yeah, I was just looking at the fact that uh, and that's, 51 that Jesus has asks him what he, what do you want me to do for you um because surely Jesus could see that the man was blind but I think that sometimes God wants us to ask what what do you want what is it that you need me to do and and then God will do it for us, but I think we do need to ask for what we need, and because although God knows, He still wants us to ask and to to talk to Him. Um. So yeah, I think that's that's standing out for me. Yeah, I think it is. Um, it's very interesting this guy's tenacity, but also his insight and his willingness to push through. And I think this is how Jesus is taught, isn't it? He's taught in parables, which you can listen to the story and go, well, that's a nice story about a guy scattering a seed. Well, that's a nice story, you know, um, of, uh, you know, another setting, you know. But, But actually, when you look at it, you've got to tease out what he's teaching. You've got to actually ruminate on it, think on it, draw out the meaning. And Jesus is entreating people to do that. And here we find someone doing that with Jesus himself. He's recognized who Jesus is. That is worth drawing out. That's the answer he needs. That's what he desires. That's where he, his focus is. And he shouts louder when the crowd gets louder. He shouts stronger than the crowd. And he's willing, like Jenny said, to throw aside everything and go forward. You know, there was, there was, I think they used to have cloaks that were quite distinctive beggars cloaks. He threw off his, <laughs> he threw off his everything he had, you know, of, of, of his, his ability to beg in some ways to step forward to Jesus. There's something very powerful in this. And Jesus' response is pretty interesting as well. 
uh, what would you like me to do? <laughs> you're thinking, Jesus, can't you see? He can't see. He, he wants, you know, but he waits for him. There's an engagement with him. And I wonder whether Mark's put this in, because we know Mark's written his gospel to help us find out about Jesus. Maybe he's put that in to make us question. What do we want Jesus to do for us? What What is it we need from him? Maybe, maybe it's there to actually think, are we willing to push through? Or, or are we going to just go, well, that's a nice story. That that's that, or, that That's very interesting. But or are we going to get to the point where we're saying, I want to encounter you, Jesus. I want to meet you. I I want something of you in my life. And, and that's the entreatment. That's the calling. And here we've got a very good example of that. And I would have thought that the crowds are a mixed bag of people. You know, you've got some people going, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I like his teaching, mm -hmm. but other people going, yeah, I think his teaching's wonderful. And you've got other people thinking his teaching changed my life. And you've got other people in all different stages. You've got a whole babble of a crowd with all different opinions in it. What's going to make people step over, step forward it has to be a personal decision. It has to be mm -hmm. something beyond the, um, just following the crowd. It's got to have a stepping out. And I think this is something that you see quite clearly here. Um, Sue? Um, yeah, it says um, that simple it is. It's a ghost that Jesus, your faith has healed you. And often you don't think it's going to be that simple. Or when you do step out, you're expecting something massive to happen. But it reminds me of myself when... Um, I actually called, I was I was struggling to know what was the truth at the time. And um, I remember literally saying, God, you'll have to show me the truth because I can't understand it. And I and I know now I did it sort of like an audible voice, say, go and get a Bible. Well, I was a young Christian. I didn't know if I heard it or not. But all I know, it stirred me a lot to find a Bible. And all I had was a Salvation Army one, which I couldn't understand that well to read. Um, which I went to London, that's all, you know, we used to go to Salvation Army in the afternoon. And that's all we ever did as a child. Um, but it got me enough to get a Bible and and want to read a Bible. And also um, uh, to understand God, I thought, if you get an autobiography of someone, you get a, you, you want to read their life. And that's what it felt like to me. It was felt like if I wanted to know Jesus, I had to read his autobiography to know what he was like, which we're doing now. Um, and also that, it, could it be that simple? Because it, I'd questioned it a long time. Could, did, I, did I hear that right? Did I really hear that right? Um, and, and it was simple, you know, and, and it does happen. And your faith is, it, your, it is it's stirring up something in you that you want to go in and see more of. And and that's so uh, like just go, you know, just go and do that. Go go and do what you think you gotta do, go and see what you gotta see. You know, just follow your in instincts of what God's saying, I think. But often, you know, I thought, oh, could it have been that simple? <laughs> Must have start a walk of faith. Just go and get a Bible. Oh, right, yeah. I mean everyone thinks there's a God. I mean, someone said, Oh, Sue's found God, and I thought, well, I found God through Jesus. You know, it, it's a it's a real journey but it's an ongoing journey that's the thing um but yeah it just it just spoke to me about go said jesus you know your faith has been healed and it's the start of a journey he had amazing amazing experience he he got his sight back um and what do you want from me he said jesus asked him you know this is it we need to know what we need to be asked we need to know what we're actually battling with before we can ask for it, um what we want it's lovely about Bartimaeus because um, he not only did he receive his, his healing, but he he had his salvation. And and I thought it's lovely that he at the end he followed Jesus along the road. So I believe you know he became one of Jesus's followers from that morning mm. and um and, and i was thinking about the others who were trying to put him down um and telling him 
require it wasn't necessarily on on their agenda for Jesus to to reach out to, or call Bartimaeus. Um, perhaps they didn't think that Bartimaeus was important enough. Uh, and also Jesus heard Bartimaeus's cry and call above all the babble and all the other noise that was going on around him. Um, so there again, it, Jesus hears, hears our cry um, when we call out to him. And he, he wants to be involved with us and um, involved in our life. And so uh, Bartimaeus was, he's a lovely picture, beautiful picture of, of crying out to God and, and healing that Jesus can, can bring. Um, and also his salvation, wonderful package. Mm. <laughs> I was just thinking, really, um, Bartimaeus was an outcast, wasn't he? He was sitting by the roadside. He was isolated from other people. And, um, you know, coming to Jesus, he came into his family. He followed him with everyone else. And I thought, that is so lovely. And there's so many people out there now who are, are lonely and isolated. And I think as a nation, we're very insular. And we, um, you know, people live in their own little castles really and um yes people go out and meet other people but you know people don't really have a meet in your home or anything like that and I think you know he he obviously must have felt so isolated but God brought him into the family and that's what he does for us which is so lovely you know and um I think you know there's so many people as I say out there who are like that and they need to um call out to God and, and to come into his family and there's nothing like it. I think that thirst for Jesus that Sue was expressing there mm. is is just very powerful and I think that that seeking of Jesus by Bartimaeus yeah. that desire for him it's the same as a woman reaching out touching his cloak it's the same as all the other examples where people have reached out and Jesus' statement your faith has healed you is it, actually not the faith itself, but the trust he's put in Jesus has brought us healing. Mm. And that putting his trust in Jesus is what faith is. It's putting our trust in something. You can put your trust in lots of things. Very often they 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 cause us to think, oh, <laughs> it didn't happen or it didn't work out. But when we put our faith in Jesus, it's into something solid into someone solid someone who 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 responds to that and so here you see his faith in mm. jesus is not misplaced faith it, it's not placed in an object it's not placed in anything else it's put in him and he recognizes he's the messiah it, it's an incredible statement yeah. he jumped up didn't he when he was called there was no hesitation he uh he was already um sitting down by the roadside we've seen other people coming to jesus and falling at his feet um bartimaeus was already uh, down low before jesus but he jumped up um and he threw off his cloak i think there's significance in that cloak him throwing it off um we could perhaps read a bit too much into it but you know perhaps he realized that his life was going to change from that point onwards, he wouldn't need his cloak. He wouldn't be a beggar anymore. His whole life mm. um, was going to change. I guess that cloak was probably his only possession. You know, he sat on it. He kept himself warm, collected money in it. Maybe he threw all that aside. Perhaps all the money went went fly because it was um, a start of a, a transformed life for him. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the, the road to Jericho, which is where this happened, um, is is part of the pilgrimage pathway to Jerusalem. So people would travel for festivals to Jerusalem. So along the route, you'd have beggars sat sitting there begging from the people going past. That's how they made their income. Oh, it's festival time. Better get out on the road of, to Jericho and and get begging along the side there as people pass and you know i think that's that that kind of picture of of him sat sitting there begging 
and leaving that to follow Jesus. And when Jesus says to him, go your own way, you know, um, he doesn't go his own way. In actual fact, he goes Jesus's way. He joins Jesus on the way into Jerusalem. And he's probably not made many festivals. He's if, if he was to make the festival, he's going to walk with the same bunch of people the whole way to Jerusalem. If he sits on the side of the road, he's got lots of people passing. He can get more income. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He, he's not going to travel to Jerusalem. He's traveling to Jerusalem for the festival with mm-hmm. Jesus. And that's a really incredible statement. Where would you like to go? You're free to go. Go your way. And he chooses to go with Jesus. It shows his heart even more. If we, if we weren't impressed before, we should be impressed by that. Just getting back to the cloak again. You see, you brought it up, Bob. <laughs> but also you can think about the cloak holding him down, can not you? You know, as well as, you know, all these possessions. But also, and well, we've said it in a similar way, isn't it? But the cloak can be heavy and burdened. And as he's walked with Jesus, now he's lighter. You can see, can you imagine what you must feel? Yeah, it, it, it could be like a, a a spiritual thing that said heavy on him um, and then he had to throw it off. Not that he knew that was what was happening, but, you know, it's a similar sort of thing that you could think of him doing, like, uh, of ourselves, that we're letting go of the things that have been holding us down. And the cloak is like something you throw off, like your heavy burdens on your shoulders and the heavy bricks on your back. And he says, throws them off and he gets up and gets healed and then walks along the road with Jesus. It's amazing. In my notes beside the Bible, it says that these are um, the first blind man that was healed and Bartimaeus are bookends to the whole teaching ministry of Jesus and the response to it. Mm. In some ways, it's saying that it's almost like, how blind are you? Where where are you with your insight into who Jesus is? Is kind of if that's the case, if the notes are right, that that then means that that question is hanging for all of us, and mm-hmm. it's and it's just saying, yeah, we want to see Jesus, we want to see more, you know, and that desire of Jesus, that openness of Jesus, that that acceptance of Jesus is just beautiful and and too often we put barriers around people jesus didn't put barriers around people when when there was faith there he responded to it and i think that's a very powerful dynamic and i think that that kind of um showing jesus on his way to jerusalem on his way to a gruesome death on a cross that he's we we're looking at the other day about how they would spit on him how things would be he's describing those things to his disciples and actually in the midst of that jesus is not self-absorbed actually he's willing to stop for the blind beggar on the side of the road there's something so selfless there's something in his leadership style that should challenge all leadership styles there's something in him that is willing to keep his eyes on the broken, on the rejected, on the outcast, even when he's on his way to what must be a horrific um, situation ahead of him. He's leading the way with his disciples. We we saw the other day, he's, he's moving forward, but he's willing to stop for someone who cries out his name. I just think, wow, you know, Mm -hmm. that that is so humbling. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that, um, we know Bartimaeus's name. We don't know the names of the other people uh, who were healed. Um, and maybe there is some significance in that. It makes it very personal, doesn't it? We know his name. He wasn't just a blind beggar at the roadside, um, an unnamed person. We can identify perhaps even more with him because he, he is named. Mm. I've just looked up the meaning of his name. It means honourable son. Oh. Mm. And you also wonder whether some of these people were significant people in the early church. And so they were known people. And so where they appear in the story of Jesus, that, oh, yeah, this is so-and-so. Yes, it was Mark that did this. Yes, it was John that did this. Yes, it was Bartimaeus who was sat by the side of the road. 
and then he followed mm -hmm. Jesus. He became one of his mm -hmm. disciples. Um, you, you just we don't know. We we're missing that bit of the story. But honourable son, oh, I mean, how how honourable did Bartimaeus feel sat on the side of the road? Mm -hmm. And you know, <laughs> honourable mm -hmm. son seems like a joke. His name seems to be a joke. And then Jesus comes along and boom, <laughs> he is an honorable son. Look at how he looks at Jesus. Look at how he responds to Jesus. Look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, shall we leave it there? I think we're past time. But thank you all for your comments. That's really insightful. I think um, that's really challenging as well and um, a good place for us to leave this. And we'll continue the journey to Jerusalem tomorrow. But thank you all. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to find out more about Hope Church South Bedfordshire, you can find out off our website, www.hopecentral.co.uk. Also, you may like to visit us. We meet at a lovely old church uh, built in 1220 uh, in Tillsworth, part of Dunstable uh, wider area. And um, you're welcome to visit us. We meet at half 10 in the morning and you'd be most welcome to attend and meet us there or alternatively you can find us uh, broadcasting live on our youtube channel which is also under hope church south bedfordshire thank you very much for joining us hope god blessed you loads